Well, welcome to another Digimedia Dude tutorial. I'm your host, Marcelo Lewin, the Digimedia Dude. And today we have a very special guest instructor, Michael Camas from Keycode Media. Welcome, Michael. Thank you very much. I love being called special. Thank you, Marcelo. <laughs> and I mean that in a, in a very nice and special way for you. <laughs> Thank you. So, Michael, today you're going to talk to us and show us cloud editorial, which, of course, um, a lot of us may not be fully aware of this. So, why don't I just pass it on to you and you can get started. Sounds great. If something can be exciting in the tech realm, this is exciting because it's the promise that we've all wanted. We've all seen the you know commercials where people are sitting on a beach on their iPad or mobile device and editing or creating content. And that's what we want. We want to be uh, free of the boundaries of the four walls our employer has for us. Um, and cloud and remote editorial is the promise that we don't have to be within those four walls. But it's not quite a reality for most people. And I thought I'd kind of go through why that is. First of all, we should talk about what it is and what it ain't. I mean, uh, this past week or so, we've seen announcements from Frame.io about plugins inside Premiere. And, and that's not the thing I'm talking about. I'm talking about your favorite editorial tools. If we talk about the big three, right, Avid, Adobe, Final Cut, those are the tools I'm talking about for remote editorial and cloud editorial. Um, I'm not talking about review and approve like Frame.io or using YouTube or WireDrive or Vimeo. So I just want to make sure we got that straight. We're talking about full-fledged editors here. And there's a bunch of challenges we should be aware of. Um, obviously, we know we have fat media, media that's just too big to fit through your internet pipe. Um, we have different editors who are using different tools and different software and different platforms. And how do we get all those to talk to each other efficiently? Um, we're worried about security and hacks, right? If we're editing remotely, how are people not getting our media? How can we protect ourselves? Um, the big one is latency. The further you are away from where your media is located, the longer it takes for you to get that media. That's called latency. There's a delay, and that's physics. That's speed of light. We can't do anything about that, so we have to be aware of that. Also, how much is this going to cost, and will my job be outsourced? Everyone's always worried about uh, U.S. editing jobs being outsourced elsewhere. So how fat is the media we're using? Uh, this is a chart of just some common media types, and you can see up there at the top left, that's how fast our internet is here in the States. We're only getting a sliver of what we need to edit these files natively. Uh, so unfortunately, we need to create proxies or low-resolution versions to fit through the measly pipes that we have here for the internet in the United States. And of course, if I may jump in for a second, Michael, sure. um, we're not even talking about 8K or even 360 degree video when you have multiple streams of 4K, right? That wouldn't... Completely. We're talking about video bit rates that are less than standard def. We're talking about bit rates that um, uh, just visually don't look that good. And you may not even be able to handle that quality in terms of what your connection is. Like I said at the beginning, if you're sitting on a beach, you're not going to get as much bandwidth and throughput as you would be sitting in a coffee shop even. So we have three different paradigms. We've got the cloud editing, which is everything is in the cloud and you're editing off a cloud. And when I say cloud, I mean Amazon Web Services or Azure or some kind of third party cloud platform. Uh, we also have remote editing, which is all the media is back at the mothership, back at your home base, back at your employer's building and you're editing remote. And then we have more acronyms because we love acronyms in our, in our industry and that's PC over IP. Uh, those of people who have used Team Viewer and, and uh, tools like that, it's kind of like that. Um, and I'll go over the differences in a minute. So cloud editing. This is pretty cool. You'll see at the bottom right, I have the whole good, fast, cheap rule, I should say. And this one isn't that good. It's fast and it's cheap, though. Uh, cloud editing when you're editing in a web browser, right? So there are tools like uh, Forscene uh, made by a company called Forbidden out in the U.K., Great product for what it is. It allows you to load up a web browser, and using Java, you can actually edit in your web browser. You can do cuts only, dissolves, multiple tracks of audio and video, but it's not your complete tool set. It's not going to give you all the features that you're accustomed to in your Avid or your Final Code or your Premiere or even your iMovie or Resolve. It's just the, the, the tools are just not there because of the limitations of the browser. You operate it by uploading proxies of your media. You upload those proxies to the cloud, you do your cut in your browser, and then you export a cut list, whether it be, again, more acronyms, uh, either an EDL or an XML or an AAF, and then you relink locally. Um, so that's, that's pretty interesting. Um, the cool thing is that it's commodity hardware. 
You don't need a strong machine to edit it because everything's being done in the browser uh, and all the media is sitting in the cloud. Uh, it's the same interface. It can be inexpensive. We find it's great for predators, you know, producers who are also editors who are maybe doing string outs, uh, maybe doing assemblies, um, and when you're doing this stuff in the field. So that's great. The second methodology is remote editing. And this is where we're seeing a lot more traction, um, albeit in a more expensive way. Um, remote editing, like I mentioned, is where all your media is sitting at the mothership, at your employer's four walls, and then you're sitting remote. The problem is, is that not a lot of people are doing it. Uh, Avid is doing it. Uh, obviously, Media Composer has Interplay, part of the Avid Everywhere philosophy. And they have the Media Composer UX, which is a way of editing in a browser as well. But they also have a way of Media Composer editing remotely. So it's pulling proxy media from the mothership. Um, Adobe has had a product for the past three years called Adobe Anywhere, which also allows this. However, it looks more like the, pro the product is going more towards on-premise sharing, uh, at least in the immediate future. So remote editing probably isn't something we want to look into uh, with Adobe Anywhere. Uh, it is good. It is fast, um, but it's not cheap. I mean, we're looking at over $100,000 for these types of solutions. So for most, most folks, um, it's just not attainable. And does it but, generate the media on the fly or the proxy? Yes, there are two different ways of doing it. Uh, you can either have it create proxies on the fly or have the proxies created before and then utilize those. So it's, it's an either or scenario. What we find those are the devils in the details. We've done several deployments where we find out that the editors needed a certain tool that while it's available in the full editor, it's not supported in remote editing scenarios. So there, there always has to be a, an analysis um, before this, these types of solutions are deployed. But luckily, when a client is spending 100 grand or more like 200 grand, um, there's plenty of time for analysis before they pull the trigger on that. The last scenario is something that most people are accustomed to, and that's PC over IP or a variant of that. Um, this is kind of like the, remo the uh, remote editing paradigm where all your media is back at home base, but in a lot of scenarios, the computer is back at home base as well. So in some scenarios, you'll have a monitor and you'll have a you know wireless router or internet connection and a keyboard and mouse, and you're just you just have a window into your computer back at home base. All the processing is being done there. Uh, now this can be done in a in an expensive way or inexpensive way, and the expensive ways are doing 30 frames a second, if not more. The color accuracy is dead on. Um, or we can do the more consumer route. I'm sure most folks out there have used go to my PC or team viewer. The problem is, is that you don't have rock solid sync. You don't have color accuracy. Um, you may have compressed video, uh, and it makes, um, critical editing and critical viewing, um, very difficult. However, it's a lot less expensive because all you need is a dummy terminal and a server back at home base. Um, so I think this has a lot of promise. The downside is that uh, the monitor that you have back where you are, back at home, is just a dummy monitor. So you can't use it for anything else. Many folks will be multitasking and maybe doing some stuff locally, but editing remotely. You can't do it with a solution like this, um, mainly because, again, you just have a dumb terminal. And that's the long and short of it. All right, Michael, great presentation. Thank you so much. Obviously, if people want to get a hold of you, all the information is there. Everybody check out the Five Things series, which is really cool. And uh, they can uh, email you right there or check out your website. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Had a blast, Marcelo. Thanks a lot. Well, thanks again, Michael. And to the rest of you, please remember to subscribe to our YouTube.com slash Digimedadude channel and check out more of our tutorials, videos, podcasts, and articles at DigimedaDude.com. So until the next tutorial, I am Marcelo Lewin, the Digimedia Dude. Cheers, everyone.